Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. We're looking at motion, and today we're going to be going to the bar. We're going to the bar. We're going to build a bar chart. A it's bar not, chart. not as fun as a bar. Right. It's an animated bar chart. It's an animated bar chart in 3D. Yeah. So this. <laughs> <laughs> not just a 3D bar yep, chart. Yep. So this builds on our warp speed motion 3D tutorial that we recently came out with, and it's something we cover there, but I thought it'd be useful to show people how to do part of that kind of okay. stuff here. Especially because it takes advantage of shapes and replicators and 3D text, which are all useful things no matter what you're doing in motion. So I'm going to build it from scratch. So here we are. First thing I'm going to hit is F6 to close the timing pane because I don't want to see that. I want a nice big canvas. And then I'm going to make my axes. I'm going to use this line tool here. So I'll draw and hold the shift key down to get a straight line. Escape. Mine happens to be red. I'll leave it that way. But I don't like the ends of it. So I'll go to the inspector and I'll change the start cap to be an arrow and make it much skinnier. And the end cap, I'm going to make just none. And that's one of my axes. Maybe I'll make it not quite so wide. Command D to duplicate it. And then what I'll do in the canvas is hold the shift key down and rotate it exactly 90 degrees and move it over here. So I've got the base of my axis, my X axis. Mm -hmm. And it's not long enough. Now, I don't really want to stretch it out here to, right. to make it bigger. So the better thing to do is go to geometry. And then I want to adjust. Oh, I think it's 0.2. Nope, I'm always wrong the first time. Point. Uh, <laughs> third time. <laughs> third, yeah. There we go. Uh, that one. Yeah. There we go. Third right. time's a charm. Yeah. Okay, so there's my axis. Pretty straightforward. So now I want grid lines in here. And for grid lines, I'm going to go back to my line tool and shift, shift drag out a line. Escape. I'm going to make this guy white. I'll just drag that white tile on top of that to make it white and make it really thin. And then to make a bunch of them, I'm going to turn to the replicator. So that guy's right down here in the bottom right corner with the letter L for replicator. And by default, it's this, it's this big thing that is a whole bunch in a rectangle of them, a bunch of copies of the line in a rectangle, five by five. But I'm going to change that in the inspector to be a line. And then I'm going to stretch this line uh -huh. up. Nice. So I've got some nice grid lines. And if I want them to be perfectly straight up and down and go over here and look at my numbers for x, I'll just make x zero here and x zero there so that they're straight up and down. And then I can choose how far they go apart here. And of course, you could add you know, more, more of these. Um, I'm also hit command left bracket to move it down in the stacking right, order so behind it's behind. It. Yeah. So, and, and obviously here I could add more points if I wanted more definition, but that's that's good. You like get that. the idea. You get the idea, exactly. So we need some dates, T for the text tool, or we need values. I'm going to happen to do dates, so 2000 right here. Um, escape. And then I, I can option drag to make a copy on that. Option drag. Hold the shift key. Um, option drag. Oops, it's easy to hit that other thing. Option drag. <laughs> You're grabbing the rotation. I know. And I'm, I, there we go. There it is. Um, Option oh, drag. I see what you're going with this. <laughs> and I don't take too much about where they are. Um, I'm just dragging them out. So I'm going to select all of them and just oh. them. And there's some nice tools for lining and distributing here. So from the object menu, I can go to alignment and choose to align the uh, vertical centers right there. Nice. And then I can also choose to alignment, distribute their centers, their horizontal centers. So now they're nice and evenly spread out exactly the way I want them. Mm -hmm. So from there, I can just take them and very carefully put them where I want to go. Of course, you could do more or less and change the values. You don't want them all to be yeah, 2,000. 2000. 2000 dude. In fact, in the tutorial, I show a way to do this um, using the numbers generator. Uh, but it's a little too involved for here, for right. what we're doing. This is a little bit faster. 30 and 2040. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now how do you make this 3D? I want to add bar charts on here. So what you normally think to do is go ahead and grab a rectangle tool and you could draw a rectangle for one of these data points. Uh, press escape and I'll make it a fill with no outline. And I'm also going to move the anchor point down to the very bottom because by doing that, Shift S to go back to the regular tool. If I scale this now in the properties inspector, sorry, no, I just want to scale in Y. We can make this grow. Sure. My, it, that, you know, and that kind of works. And I can also go to the filter pop-up menu and go to uh, stylize and choose extrude. 
which will give me a faux 3D bar chart. Yeah. The problem with this is, and it works great, it looks nice. As long as you don't move the camera. As long as you don't move the camera, you already know where I'm going with this, yeah. right? So if I add a camera and orbit it, it kind yeah. of falls apart. Okay, so we're working it's in cards in space, like you yeah, have to say. Exactly. So because we're working in an environment where we might want to move the camera from set to set, I'm going to do something different. I'll delete that guy. T for the text tool, surprisingly enough, I'm going to click in the canvas and then from the emoji. edit menu. No. Yeah, well, emoji and symbols. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Emoji yeah. and symbols. But the symbol I want is this little square here. Ah. So I'm going to double click it. And for some reason, every time I double click it, I get two symbols. So I'm going to hit the key. That's a bat again. From the <laughs> There's a bat, ball. yeah, from that other episode. <laughs> We're going yeah. back in time. Right. Hodor. Um, so now what I want to do, I'm going to make this a little bigger. I'm going to increase its size. Because this is going to be the base of my little chart, bar chart. I'm going to hold the shift key down and lay it down flat. Right. Okay, so I'm now laying it flat like a floor. You can see if I move it up or down, we see yeah. be below it and yeah. above it. I'll move it about to where I want it to be. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what's cool. I'm going to enable 3D text in the text inspector. Hmm. And if I increase the depth, see how it gets big from both sides, yeah. from the middle out? Uh -huh. Well, there's a depth direction. So I think backwards is what I want. Oh, nope. it's always the opposite. The <laughs> <laughs> so as I increase the depth, look it at grows. That. Look at that. Nice. So now, and th now the cool thing about this is, in this case, if I orbit the camera, that's really 3D. Yep. Okay, it's behind by default. I can move it in front, but we've got a real uh, quote real 3D object sitting here for our bar chart. Because it's text, I can also apply some kind of material of any kind. You want me to make it gold? Okay, yeah. so let's go to metal. It's a finance and choose gold. Graph. Right, to How finance much graph. Gold is worth. There we go, and it's reflecting an environment. We can see if we move the camera around, it's nicely yeah. reflecting the environment. <laughs> and then to animate it, so I could put this on more of an angle. To animate this, we're going to animate the depth value. So I'll move forward and set a keyframe for that value, and then go back in time and set that down to zero. And from there, if I animate it, nice. you've know, got a quick, easy That's animation. Sweet. That's sweet. One more tweak I might make to do it is Command 8 for the keyframe editor, because that animation yeah, is straight line. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's a linear move. Exactly. So I'll change the interpolation to Bezier. It's like a fly hitting fly paper. And even sometimes this is something to notice. Even when you change it to Bezier, mm -hmm. you still don't get a curve. So if we go to interpolation, it's Bezier, but there's no curve. Sometimes you have to manually add this curve in. I don't know why. Sometimes it's there automatically, and sometimes it's not. It's one of those fun things about motion. Fun. Yeah. So I'm going to close that now with Command 8. So now we should get a nice smooth start and smooth start and stop right. to there. the Ooh, animation. Nice. There we go. Okay, and then it's simply a matter of duplicating that guy. Um, I'll just do it once here, Command D, and move it over. Whoops, not in Z space. I want to move it over in Y. And then if I want this to animate to a different value, I can just go back to that keyframe by clicking a little left arrow there and say this one needs to go there. Nice. And now I've got two of them. And you can retime them. Retime them and, re -time them and everything and adjust the camera. So, right. But that's a basic ideal idea to build a 3D chart. <laughs> now, I'll just show you an example where I've also added a 3D background here uh -huh. um, by using another exact same idea. It was another piece of text that was that emoji and symbols right. and making it very but big. A, but it's a slab now. Yeah, it's a it's slab. It's an obelisk. Yeah, it's an obelisk. It's 2001 Space Odyssey. <laughs> it's, a big, it's a big <laughs> um, right. animated 3D graph. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, where did they come up? There they go. I wanted to... Exactly. So there in a nutshell is um, building a 3D graph in motion. It's, it's, it's so awesome. <laughs> it really is. I, I get a kick out of the stuff he, he, he builds in motion. It's, it's, it just, again, blows me up my mind what you can do with this program. Yep. Uh, it's it, it, it's, it's just fantastic. And the real-time performance and the behaviors, I don't know why more people just don't jump into it because it's so fantastic. Yeah, it's 50 bucks. Yeah, 50 bucks. Yeah. And uh, you can learn it from, of all places, rippletraining.com. Yeah. And so uh, check out his new Warp Speed Motion 3D. It's amazing. Uh, learn a ton of stuff on it. Uh, the usual places you want to follow us, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, uh, link below. You're probably watching this on YouTube, so yeah. <laughs> no link. Anyway, uh, we look forward to the next episode of MacRay Studio. We'll see you then.